Trevor from Ostrich Long Neck. This is the first segment in a series in which we embark on our mission to light up starships using an Arduino board. As part of our initial briefing, we will be examining the Arduino Uno board, or at least the parts of the board that will be vital to our mission, and how to install the hardware and software onto our consoles. The first thing we notice when looking at the board is a large computer chip right in the middle of everything. This is the 80 mega chip and it's the part which stores and runs our programs or sketches as they're known in the Arduino world. The Arduino connects to the computer via a USB cable which plugs into this USB port. This powers the board and allows us to upload our sketches to the 80 mega chip. As soon as the board has power, an onboard LED lights up. Below the USB port is an input for an external power supply. After you've uploaded a sketch, you can disconnect the USB cable completely from the computer and run your sketch from an external power source. The Arduino can be powered by a 5 to 12 volt power supply because it steps down higher voltages to the 5 volts that it requires. If you have a cell phone charger lying around, it outputs 12 volts which is fine for your Arduino. Just remember to disconnect the USB cable first. Next to the USB port are three surface mounted LEDs. The one marked TX flashes when data is being transferred from the USB port to the 80 mega and the RX flashes when the data is being received by the 80 mega. The one marked L is an LED which is connected to pin 13 and is very handy as a time saver if you have an output to that pin. In the one corner you'll see a reset button to quickly restart the sketch, similar to when you first plugged in the power supply. Now we get to the interesting part, the header sockets. Because Arduino users often plug header pins into these sockets, we simply refer to them as pins by convention. These pins can be set to read an input such as the press of a switch or to output something such as lighting an LED. In the upper row, there are 14 pins, labelled from 0 to 13. They are all digital, which means they can only be in an on or off state. However, the inventors of the Arduino were very clever. Six of these numbers have a little squiggly line in front of them, which means they can do pulse width modulation. Simply put, pins 3, 5 and 6, and 9, 10 and 11 can quickly flicker on and off at different speeds but this happens so fast that an LED connected to one of these pins appears to be dimmer or brighter to the human eye. Any value from 0 to 255 can be sent to these pins and 255 will light up an LED the brightest. In the bottom row on the right hand side are 6 analog input pins. They can read values from 0 to 1023 which is handy if you need to connect a light sensor for example or a potentiometer which allows you to vary resistance by small amounts. But the best thing about these sockets, for our purposes anyway, is that they can be repurposed by a sketch to act like digital sockets. They simply become digital pins 14 to 19, so we get 6 extra pins, but unfortunately they can't handle pulse width modulation. Towards the left are several very important pins when it comes to actually setting up a circuit. You'll notice there are two ground pins, which are the negative part of your circuit. Effectively, they're the end point of current flow through the circuit. And, just because you can never have too many ground pins, there's another one next to pin 13 in the top row. Next to the ground pins, there's a 5 volt pin, which allows you to feed 5 volts directly from the Arduino board to your circuit. Similarly, the pin just to the left of the 5V allows you to feed 3.3 volts into your circuit. The pin on the far right of this group, which is labelled as VN, allows you to feed your input voltage straight into the circuit. So, if you're running the Arduino off of a 12V power source, you can plug these 12V directly into your circuit. This is great for running motors and lighting an LED strip. Unfortunately, the Arduino outputs very little current so we can't run a whole Starship's lighting from this one V-in pin. Each pin on the Arduino has an output of around 20 milliamps, barely enough to light a single LED. To protect the board, the Arduino's total output does not exceed 400 milliamps. 
So to run a starship we need relays and MOSFETs, but we'll get to that when the time comes. These are the bits of the Arduino board that are vital to our mission. Now we'll have a look at installing the hardware and software onto our consoles. Our next step is to install the Arduino software from the Arduino website which will allow us to communicate with our board. In order to install the software we need to go to the following website. Once there, just click on the download tab. And then we choose which version of the program we want to install. I'm installing on a Windows 7 machine, so I'm just going to click right there on the Windows installer. What this will do is it brings up a screen for donations, okay, but I already gave it the office. So I'm just going to click just download. There we go. While it's downloading, I just want to draw your attention to one of the tabs up here. That's the learning tab. And there you'll see there's a getting started uh, section that helps anyone who's brand new to the Arduino, uh, introduces you to all the little ins and outs of the Arduino. And then uh, there's a whole bunch of great tutorials, especially on how to program in C, so that you can write sketches for your Arduino. And the last one is the playground. That's uh, where a lot of people interact with each other. They upload software, help each other, and um, it's a great place to get any advice if you're stuck on anything. Something else which we need to download is a small library, which is included in all of the sketches I've written. We can access this library from the following download link. And as quick as that, it's downloaded. It's a very small file. Now we can finally install everything onto our consoles. Now we've downloaded all the software that we need. Let's go ahead and double click on the Arduino install program. And we run it. Right. Just install everything there. Yeah, we can change our installation directory. And there we go. There we go, it's all done. What it does ask for during the installation process is if it can install the driver software for the Arduino board. That person should just click install and let it go ahead and install all the drivers that it needs to do. Great, now the main program is installed. Let's just do the LED flasher. I'm just going to right click on that and say extract all. And then we're just going to browse to where the program directory was. Arduino directory. Then we just need to go down into the libraries directory and click OK and then we just extract to there. And that's all there is to it. Everything's installed. Now we can plug in our Arduino board and take it from there. I've plugged the USB cable into the Arduino board and I'm going to plug it into the USB port of the computer. I know in some systems it um, can't find the uh, device drivers so what a person can do is go into the device manager and right click on update drivers and then you can search for it in the Arduino directory. There's a drivers directory and a person can just select this directory 
and then all of the Arduino's device drivers will be available there. I'm just going to check quickly to see if the Arduino is being picked up correctly by the computer. And there we go, there's the Arduino Uno and it's on COM port 9. Let's open up the Arduino graphic user interface. That's just a program that allows us to upload our sketches onto the Arduino. I just double clicked it on the desktop. There we go, that's what the graphic user interface looks like. You'll see that it's already got the beginnings of a sketch over here. One thing that we do need to change is just the port which the Arduino uses. We just have to select COM9 there to make sure it is on. We are going to open up one of the example sketches. There we go. So we go up to File and then an Examples, Basics, and we just do a blink sketch. All the sketch does is it blinks the LED on pin 13. And if you remember, there's an onboard LED on the Arduino. So we can immediately see that everything has been set up properly and is working right. So click that upload arrow to upload the sketch. And it's being sent through to the Arduino. There we go. It um, reports or any errors or anything that you might need to know in this uh, bottom little panel and it all looks good uh, just telling you how much of the storage space it's used up uh, which variables it's used that kind of thing and if you have a look at your Arduino you should see a flashing LED on pin 13 great our Arduino is set up and everything is running perfectly There we go, that wasn't so bad was it? In our next segment we will be looking at uploading our very first sketch onto the 80 mega chip and also building our very first circuit. So until then, goodbye and thanks for watching.